internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Hope you're ready for a review game. The game is called What's Wrong With This Picture and it's inspired by the back of cereal boxes. You know the game, they give you an image and you have to figure out how many things are wrong with the picture, except we're doing it with graphs. This graph is wrong, you have to find the mistakes. To play, the first thing you have to do is go download the free worksheet that goes with this video. It's inside my Ultimate Review Packet. So go to ultimatereviewpacket.com and click on Macroeconomics or Microeconomics, and if you haven't bought it yet, that's okay. You can sign up for the free trial, and it's in there under the Final Review folder. And if you're a teacher, make sure to watch the very end of this video because I have a quick message for you. Okay, now you have the handout in front of you. It's time to actually start. I want you to go through each nine of these graphs, figure out how many mistakes are there, and where are they? Here we go, let's start with macroeconomics and find out what's wrong with this picture. For the first one, the production possibilities curve, there's three mistakes. A point in the curve is not impossible, it's definitely possible, it's just inefficient or underutilization of our resources. And a point outside the curve is unattainable or impossible given our current resources, and any point on the curve is efficient. So inefficient right here, that's wrong, that is not inefficient, a point inside the curve is inefficient. And for graph number two, there's four mistakes for supply and demand. The demand and supply curve are mislabeled. Demand goes to the dirt. It's downward sloping. Supply is upward sloping. So those are both wrong. And notice that the price and the quantity equilibrium are also wrong. You don't want to switch price and quantity. For graph number three, showing a positive output gap, most of this graph is correct. We have price level, real GDP, vertical long run ag supply curve, aggregate demand, aggregate supply. This graph is right except from the bottom where it has that full employment. That is mislabeled, it's in the wrong spot. That vertical long run aggregate supply curve, that's full employment. So this graph has only one mistake. For the next graph, we're looking at more consumer spending using aggregate demand and supply. The first problem is up here, it says price, that's wrong. We're looking at price level. We're not looking at a market, we're looking at all markets. And you can also see that vertical line is mislabeled. It says short run aggregate supply, that's actually the long run aggregate supply. And of course, an increase in consumer spending would shift aggregate demand to the right. It wouldn't shift it to the left. So that shift is wrong. But if there was a decrease in demand, the price level wouldn't go up, it would be going down. So that arrow is also wrong. So that graph has four things wrong. Now the next one, this is moving on to unit four, showing the money market. This one has three things wrong. The first one up here, it says inflation, it's supposed to be the nominal interest rate because we're looking at how the money supply affects interest rates. And we're looking at the supply and demand for money. So where it says aggregate demand right here, that's wrong. That should just show the money demand curve. Also it talks about the central bank selling bonds. That would decrease the money supply, and this shows an increase in money supply. So it's shifting the wrong direction. Also in unit four, you learn about the loanable funds market. The graph looks like this. It is real interest rate, that's correct. We've got demand, supply, correct equilibrium. What's wrong is down here on the bottom where it says GDP. That is not GDP, that's supposed to be the quantity of loans. So there's only one mistake on that graph. In unit five, you learn about the Phillips curve. Yes, on the y-axis, it's inflation, but down here, it's not GDP, it's unemployment. It shows you the relationship between inflation and unemployment. In the long run, there's no relationship between them. So there's a long run Phillips curve, and that's correct. But in the short run, there is an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment, but it's labeled the short run Phillips curve, not short run aggregate supply. So two mistakes, on that graph. And here in unit five, you also draw the graph for economic growth. It's just like what you learned back in unit one with the shifting outward of the production possibilities curve. Now, if you look at this graph, there's only one thing wrong. It's here on the bottom. It's Y1 and Y2. Those are both mislabeled. You gotta switch them. And finally, here in unit six, when you learn about foreign exchange, this graph has two mistakes. First, we're looking at the quantity of dollars, the market for dollars. That should be the yen over dollars, not dollars over yen. Now, in terms of labeling, the rest of the graph is correct. We've got demand, supply, correctly labeled, exchange rate one, two, quantity one, two. That's right, except it's the wrong direction when it comes to the shift. If there's more inflation in Japan, then Japanese people wanna buy more American stuff and that would increase the demand for dollars. So that shift is the wrong direction. Okay, now it's time to report how you did. In the comments below, let me know how many you got correct from each one of these graphs out of nine. Did you get three out of nine, nine out of nine? What'd you get? Let me know in the comments. Okay, here we go. In microeconomics, you absolutely have to know the graphs and all the little details. Let's start off in unit one with an easy one, the production possibilities curve. There's three mistakes. A point inside the curve is attainable. You can produce that. It's just inefficient or underutilizing our resources. So that's mislabeled. Also a point outside the curve, that's not inefficient. That's unattainable. Also, any point along the curve is actually efficient. So labeling that inefficient, that's incorrect. Inefficient would be a point inside the curve. So three mistakes, 
on that graph. Now in unit two for supply and demand, this graph has four mistakes. First, I flip supply and demand. Demand goes to the dirt, it's downward sloping. Supply goes to the sky, upward sloping. So those are mislabeled. Also look at the equilibrium, quantity price. Don't label it like that. It's price and quantity, four mistakes, on that graph. In microeconomics, you gotta know all the different variations of supply and demand. You know, ceilings, floors, taxes, subsidies, quotas, so many different ways of drawing this graph. You've gotta know it. With this graph of a price ceiling, there are three mistakes. First, notice that consumer and producer surplus are mislabeled. This one should be consumer surplus, this one should be producer surplus, so that's wrong. Now the rest of the labeling is correct. We've got downward sloping demand, supply, quantity demanded, quantity supply, those are all correct, except this is not a surplus, this creates a shortage. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the cost curves. The details matter here. On this graph, there's three mistakes. First, it says average fixed cost down here. That's not horizontal. That's the fixed cost that would be horizontal. It doesn't change. The average fixed cost gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now that one's clearly wrong, but the other one's a little more subtle. The average total cost should go down, hit marginal cost, and go up. It can't keep going down. Its minimum can't be here. That's wrong. Also, because the average fixed cost gets smaller and smaller, the average total cost and the average variable cost need to get closer and closer. This one looks like those lines are diverging, and that's incorrect. Now, in most cases, your teacher or professor is not gonna give you points off for drawing the graph this way, but make sure you understand the details because it's gonna mess you up when you're drawing the graphs on your own if you don't draw them right and understand why they're right. So here we go, we have perfect competition, side-by-side -side graphs, the market graph, correct labeling, demand, supply, equilibrium, that's right, except it's not labeled market, it's labeled firm. That's wrong. This should be the market, that should be the firm. And for this firm, there's all sorts of mistakes. We've got a horizontal Mr. Darp. Demand should equal the marginal revenue, not the marginal cost. Also, it shows the marginal revenue is going up. That should be labeled marginal cost. So those are both wrong. And what's worse is they're not profit maximizing. They're not producing where the MR would equal the MC, so the quantity's in the wrong spot. And that means the profit box is also in the wrong spot, and they've got it labeled loss here. So there's all sorts of mistakes here on this graph. But if you spot those mistakes for perfect competition, you can do the same thing for a monopoly graph. On this graph, there's three mistakes. But most of the graph is actually correct. We've got demand, marginal revenue, marginal cost. They're producing the profit maximizing price and quantity. That's right. But look at that ATC curve. It's labeled AVC. That's wrong. Also notice that box of profit is in the wrong spot. It should go down to the average total cost curve, not keep going down to where MR equals MC. That box is too big. And the deadweight loss is incorrect. It shouldn't include this area here at all. Now in unit three, you learned about perfect competitive firms in a product market. Here in unit five, we're learning about the same idea except in a resource market, hiring workers. And there is a horizontal supply curve, but it's not the marginal revenue product. It's the marginal resource cost. So that's wrong. Also that downward sloping curve should be the demand or the marginal revenue product, not the marginal resource cost. So those are mislabeled. Also, there is no profit box. You're not labeling profit on this graph at all. You do that in the product market, but not here in the resource market. Now finally, here in unit six, when you have to draw a negative externality, this graph has three mistakes. The marginal social cost should be above the marginal private cost. So each one of these are mislabeled. And the deadweight loss is also in the wrong spot. It should be up here, not down here. Okay, now it's time to report your score. There were nine different graphs. Right now, go in the comments and let me know, out of these nine graphs, how many did you get entirely correct? Was it nine out of nine, five out of nine, two out of nine? Let me know. Now, before I leave, a quick message to you teachers. Please don't give either one of these handouts to your students, even though they're free in the Ultimate Review Packet. Please don't use them in your class. I make these resources and put them in the free trial of the Ultimate Review Packet so students have an incentive to get in there, take a look what's in there, and see if it's something they want to buy for themselves. So please don't download and give these to your students or any other resources in the Ultimate Review Packet, like my study guides or my videos, my cheat sheet. Don't give any of that stuff to your students unless you buy bulk orders for your class. And if you want to learn more about that, take a look in the links below. Also, in addition to putting these in the Ultimate Review Packet, I'm also adding these to my AP Economics worksheets. So if you've already purchased my worksheets, you have access to these two handouts, just log in, they're there on your account. Okay, I hope you did well on this quick graphing review activity. What's wrong with this picture? I'm gonna be making more review videos for you as we get closer to the AP exam. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.